Are you an adventurer looking to take your hunt to the next level? Then you're in the right place. Welcome to East Meets West Hunt with your host, Bo Martonic. All right, we're live. This is day 10 for me. Day two for these guys of the East Meets West Hunt Podcast, the daily hunt podcast from the Elk Hunt in Colorado. So I'm joined here uh, with Joey, who was on the mic yesterday, and also a a new face that was mentioned, Logan. So how are you guys doing tonight? Awesome, full. After a long hike out, we uh, finally got some chili made and had a good dinner. Yeah. A better now. Some bacon. <laughs> Chili and bacon. Oh, yeah. Life is good. Ready to rock and roll tomorrow. Oh, yeah. It was it was a good day today, but before we get uh, started here, Logan, how about you introduce yourself a little bit? What's your what's your full name here and, and what brings you here? For sure. Yeah. My name is Logan Stalshus. I, uh, I farm for a living and involved in a family farm at home, so I get to work with... Um, my wife and my mom and dad on a daily basis, which is, which is awesome. Actually, um, love hunting and grew up hunting, started coming out here, uh, I'd say 11, 12 years old. Um, my family has been coming out here since 1964, believe it or not. Um, my grandpa Mast came out here in 64 with, um, an outfitter. And um, we've been coming ever since. Obviously, I haven't been coming since 64. I'm not that old. But um, my dad started bringing me out. And so it's it's special to me because um, it's it's family-based. And it's a lot of good memories growing up. Um, A lot of of experiences and and ups and downs. And it builds a lot of character out here. Yeah. No, that's what's so cool about it, the fact that, like, you know, we're walking around, you're pointing things out, like, uh, this is where, you know, we killed this bull here, this Mm -hmm. happened, and everything, and it's pretty special to be able to have that place that's, you know, all the way across the United States, but still feels like home to you, you know, in some sort of way there. So that's that's pretty cool. I'm glad I was able to be a part of that, and again, appreciate appreciate that, so. It's also nice having people that know the terrain really well especially when you're going in and out in the dark long distances and stuff trails can get you know complex so it's definitely been a very added bonus for us is having them along um i don't want to i don't want to understate the value of that too oh yeah the guiding aspect of their knowledge of this this territory yeah for for you and i joe you know the first time coming in here and just watching them kind of flow through the terrain even in the dark and everything's pretty neat and and kind of knowing you know just years of knowledge and how the elk move and everything it's been it's been pretty cool to to be able to witness that and learn a little bit from it so there's something special to be said for that to be able to learn learn that terrain and everything well even after years of being out here too i mean it's um you can get turned around in a second and it's so important to have even people with you, but it's, it's, it's crazy. I mean, you can hunt in an area for a really long time out here, but it's just a different world out here and you can't ever get overconfident. You, I mean, yeah. you have to respect it every second of the way because the moment you can get turned around, it can it get confusing really quickly. Yeah. We had a long discussion about that today in the woods. And yeah. Again, like Logan said, it doesn't matter whether you're hunting a big track to public land or you're out here in Colorado and, you can get turned around no matter how experienced you are and GPS is and all, you know, new electronics and on X, they, uh, it's really helped lessen, you know, yeah, those incidents, but, uh, still it's, it's not impossible, especially in the dark. If you're, you know, bringing out a bull or a, or a mule deer or something late at night, you can definitely get turned around. Yeah. Oh, definitely. I mean, even just trying to find you go, you're 40 feet off a path. You can get completely turned around, mm-hmm. you know, and it's easy, easy to be able to do that, especially when you're following Gabe and he's going 45 miles an hour yeah. through the woods. <laughs> Running down the mountain. <laughs> he's got like chili we, on his mind. Like we made like the five mile hike back in about 16 minutes. <laughs> it was what, 40 minutes? Something like that. Yeah, we, yeah, we, we were flying. We were yeah. moving, literally sliding down hills. Oh yeah, we were moving. It was great. Love it. <laughs> it was good. We got back and I got food in my stomach, so I'm happy. Yeah, for and that's that's pretty cool. But we did get Logan is now rocking on X on his phone. 
So the world has just changed. Elk better watch out. Absolutely. I'm coming after you, Elk. Look out. Yeah, it's ready to rip now. I was impressed by that. I didn't know that you could download maps like that and use your phone while it's offline. I always thought your phone would be essentially useless when you have no reception like out here and you had to rely on a handheld GPS. So that's pretty cool. Well, Joe, I can teach you because I'm pretty much a pro now. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. So I can walk you through it if you need. That's that's what I thought. Uh, it, it, yeah, I've got two day, two day history. Like, hey, how do you? So like, yeah, we meet up with them at the gas station before we're heading to the mountain. We're literally three minutes from losing cell service. And Logan goes, "How do I get those maps to work?" <laughs> so we're driving, trying to give them instructions on how to download the map area. Literally got it downloaded like seconds before yeah. we went out of service yeah. well he did run out of data actually part way through the download yeah so <laughs> i had to use bo's wi-fi on his truck yeah. and we got it so oh it was a funny it was funny <laughs> so anyways day two um for this part of the the trip here day 10 for me it was a pretty exciting day mm-hmm. for um not not a whole lot from the elk being vocal standpoint but we got into them we did yeah it's definitely different this year i mean it's it's extremely hot out and they're not vocal which is an interesting combination but i mean we're definitely hunting water sources and elk wall walls and stuff but um it makes it really difficult when they're not vocal at all and to, even to try to get them to be vocal um is is tough it's it was a it was a tough day but a good day if that makes yeah. sense definitely got to change your strategy when that's mm-hmm. the case and that leads me to a question i wanted to ask you guys especially the more experienced elk hunters here um do you think the you know nature of the elk being non-vocal is related to you know the rut activity directly or could it be related to pressure because you do get reports of you know some of the people we talk to coming in and out of here saying that they are vocal they were vocal or you know they're hearing them in certain locations but could it be also due to the you know amount of pressure I think so, too. I think both. I do. Yeah. No, I, I definitely think the heat and stuff has a lot to do. I mean, it's hot. It's it's extremely hot in the middle of the day. But the other thing is, yeah, the hunting pressure has been with muzzleloader season, mule deer rifle season going on right now. More I mean, than normal in this the, area. Yeah. Especially back as far as we are. Yeah. Yeah, we get, we get camped back quite a ways from the trailhead, and we were probably between 10 and 11 miles from the road mm-hmm. we were back there today and still ran into someone on the way out so yep, yep. and that that's crazy but yeah anyway so we we uh were around a water source basically and joey you and logan were set up there and gabe and i were kind of going up to the other part where the, the basin kind of flowed down into it and we ran into was it one elk Two elk, two elk we saw. I don't know how Gabe spotted it. We were kind of just creeping up through the side of the Aspens, and he just saw just the, I, I guess, the cream-colored butt of, the, of an elk up there. I'm like, how did you spot That's that? That's how they you give know? themselves away. Yeah, and and uh, anyways, they just kind of, they were just cow-calling back and forth, and we were doing that back and forth with them. And we sat up for a while. You guys sat over the, the wall oh, and uh, the other water sources that were in this, this spot. And it uh, nothing happened there for a while. I think we all kind of maybe dozed off a little bit, no, ate all our no. food too early. No, you know, not at all. I was wide awake. <laughs> <laughs> Logan ate his, his can of Campbell soup. Oh, you better believe it. <laughs> About nine o'clock in the morning, all, all, our entire lunch was gone <laughs> for, for the for the whole day. That's that's the truth, though. That's the sad part about it. Yeah, it doesn't was, matter how much lunch we pack. It was like, worth it. It's not going to. It's last. delicious. It was funny. So after we we got done with our you know our resting time, we decided we're going to hike up over into another kind of valley that you guys have had luck in in the past. It's a pretty steep climb, you know, to go up there. And right before we got there we were on a bench and gabe stops and goes i smell elk i smell bull and and you guys came through like yeah we you know we smell that so we looped up and around and waited a while because the wind was wrong to be able to access that that elk or whatever it was you know from the top and i mean i'll I'll go and say it was because the wind was wrong or maybe it wasn't that we were tired and we took another nap but well we were strategic planning with our eyes shut 
is what we were doing. Meditation. Yeah, meditation. I've I've got some really good photos of you two. Yeah, well. Joey, when he takes a nap, doesn't just lay on his back. He curls up at a ball. <laughs> it, was, it was good. Yeah, when I'm out, I'm out. Yeah. Your mouth is open yeah. as well. Yeah. I was going to stick a fern in it, but I decided to be nice. <laughs> if you'd have left me there, I'd have woke up probably right now and been very confused. <laughs> <laughs> Where am I? Where is everyone? Yeah. Oh, that was funny. But anyways, we all took some naps and uh, until the sun got so hot that it kind of woke us up. And uh, then we realized, hey, look, the thermals are right again. Let's let's head back over and start hunting. And right before we crested the hill, so it was kind of where some aspens led into dark timber on a north-facing slope. And we were right above where we could smell that at elk. And we kind of had a little bit of a bugling competition between the three of us. And, uh, but was that a bugle or was that like a squeaky wagon wheel, the one that you did? Mine was like an old grandpa uh, <laughs> bull that struggled hitting the high note. <laughs> and <laughs> so we covered all the bases. Yeah, we, we, we had, yeah, we had the raghorn, we had the old grandpa, and what was the other one? Oh, we had the satellite bull. We didn't yeah. really have a good herd bull sound. No, we had to kind of, ma- no, you, 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 uh, you lip bombed a little well, bit. Oh, yeah, well, you know. I tried. So, anyways, it was kind of like we were kind of messing around, but at the same time, obviously hunting. And we went down over the hill. And we were making a little bit of noise because it was steep and it was slippery going down there. And all of a sudden, boom! There's there's a cow. There was a cow out in front of us, and she never she never saw us, did she? What, Sixty yards. Yeah. 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 She came past right past me going up the hill at a ranger at sixty yards. Yeah. And went up and kind of went up above us. So we knew we couldn't keep on the same trail because we'd be below her and blow it out. So dropped back down over and went back towards the water sources to kind of sit for for the evening there. And because those, the wallows and stuff, you could tell they were being hit. Yeah. And we were going to sit there all day, but it was just, it was so hot and beaten down on that, that meadow area that it was, it was pretty difficult. But we decided to split up in groups of two. Again, Gabe and I sat at the first water source, and you guys went to your your old trusty wallow since you guys are wallow buddies and share your, what was it, strawberry shortcake or whatever you had? I don't want to talk about Apple it. crisp. Apple crisp, sorry. Oh, that's delicious. Everyone was making fun of me for it. Yep. Three o'clock, you weren't making fun of me anymore. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're everyone, everyone huddled around. <laughs> <laughs> I made a lot of friends quickly. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. But uh, so anyways, we split up there, and uh, the evening got kind of interesting. Uh, maybe not as much. Well, you guys were in a weird place because where you were tucked in, you were hidden extremely well, but you weren't going to be able to, to see anything coming from behind you no. until it was right there in front no. of you. And Gabe and I were kind of just out on this lone pine tree up on the hill, and the elk started funneling off that. They came off the the south facing slope, but I think the way that you were explaining that they usually bed just over the top on the north face. It's like a dark timber patch over there, but they came funneling out like it was crazy. So, anyways, the I think there was I can't remember how many was in that first group. Four, five, five five cows came out. And then all of a sudden, wind switched. And I think they caught your guys. Yeah, and they were so close to us; they were yeah, they were ten with, yards. Yeah, they were right, mm-hmm. right there. And the no, the sound that they made going up over the mountain was, I'm like, there's no way anything else in the world is going to come in tonight because they just crashed. That was or, a rock slide. Yeah, I mean, it's it was crazy loud. Yeah, they didn't like the human smell for some reason, but. It, it took off <laughs> pretty quickly, and uh, and right after that, uh, all of a sudden, like on the same hillside, comes some more elk. We're like, those are the same ones, and I realized there was two cows and a bull, and you know I was just getting ready to get in position there and look through the binos, and it was not a legal bull, or the way we interpreted the the laws, it's not a legal bull. We weren't gonna. Um, they have to have a brow tine of at least five inches. And I was obviously not going to be picky on a, if, I, if I can find a legal bull. That's what, you know, that I want to uh, take there. And I don't know what your kind of thoughts are, Joey, on that. What would you shoot for your first bull? Oh, I, I would take a legal bull as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm out here for the experience. I don't consider myself a trophy hunter out here. I'm just you know, looking to learn as much as I can about elk hunting and enjoy it. And I would definitely have taken it knowing that it was in fact a legal bull, but I think he made the right call for sure. Yeah. If there's any question there, 
Um, it's it's simply not not worth risking. No, definitely yeah. not. And the the bull is still in velvet, actually. That's pretty cool to see, though. So it it was cool. They came out and had basically an open shot again, right at sixty yards, wide open, nothing between us, and I'd be very comfortable taking that shot. But they then as they started coming in, I was taking a little video of them on my phone, which I haven't reviewed yet, but. They hit our trail from earlier where we walked through and just stopped, like, on a dime. I mean, the wind was good for us, but they hit our trail and just kind of spun around, didn't know what it was, and stood there for a minute, and then they just kind of slowly went up the hill. Not as rambunctious as the other group, but uh, it was it was really cool to be able to see that and yeah. see that water source come to action with how hot it was. And, again, that's what – we're talking about with adapting yeah. to whatever the weather is. You know, obviously we'd love to have screaming bulls come running in. Yeah, it's not ideal right now, but but make so, the best of it. And yeah. So we'll we'll take long naps, sit in the warm sun, and you know, and do what we can. But there's I, something satisfying too, but knowing that you could have taken a bull elk, you know, and letting it go because it wasn't legal. There's something satisfying about fooling him, even with wind, and having the opportunity to harvest an animal like that, it's still pretty incredible, the experience. Yeah. No, that, you, I literally was just like, I was grinning ear to ear oh, yeah. when I got to see that. I'm like, That's awesome. finally, you know, day 10, and it's the first time I have a bull in front of me inside range and all these other elk coming out. It was just, it was a pretty cool experience to be able to, be able to see that. So that, that was cool. And then again, learning from everyone else's just different take on things and, and you were talking about um, when we were walking through, we were having some luck actually not completely blowing out elk when we were walking through the, the dark timber. We were just really sneaking through. I mean, we have four grown men that are yeah. walking together, basically, and we were doing all right with it. Yeah, you know? I think as everyone has different personalities hunting. And even if I think we work, we have been working together really well all four of us and it's it's pretty interesting to you know some people say don't worry about sound near as much with elk i'm definitely on the more cautious end of things as far as um maybe not tiptoeing through the woods but trying to be quiet um i think in this this case it paid off as far as sneaking up to a cow 60 yards that we didn't know was there it was pretty cool to be able to do that and i think in this weather in this situation when they're not vocal and you're going through dark timber, I think it is important to take your time, not get in a, a, a big rush, and do a lot of listening as well. Yeah. No, that was that was cool to be able to see. And, and Joey, like we were talking yesterday, this is your first time elk hunting. You've been western hunting, but not elk hunting before. How has the experience kind of been for you so far on day two? Oh, it's been awesome, man. I've enjoyed every second of it. And getting to see the elk today, it would have been really cool if they didn't catch our tracks from earlier, I was thinking you had a great vantage point on them and, you know, being able to see all of them hit the water, you know, would have been really cool. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I've been enjoying every second of it. I mean, whenever you know, I've seen, I've been around plenty of elk. I haven't, you know, been around elk with a tag in my pocket, um, until this particular trip, but it, it's, it, it's always awesome to just see that animal. You forget how large they are and you get used to hunting white tails and mule deer and it's just awesome to see them. Yeah, it's it's such a cool experience. And like we're just sitting there looking up at the the basin and everything there as the sun's going down. It was just it's such a cool thing. There's not too many things that are cooler than hearing an elk bugle. No. I don't think that'll ever get old. No. Yeah. So I'm ready to start hearing some. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, we've only heard a handful. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we we did hear one this morning, but yeah. all all of us pointed in different directions. Yeah. So we're like, all right, well we can't chase that one. <laughs> But that was that was cool. I'm I'm really excited for tomorrow, and uh, we have a little bit different game plan. Going to go up a different valley here from talking to the neighboring hunters and everything. Yeah. It seems like they're going to have some of the other uh, drainages covered. So yeah, <laughs> hoping we we're going to do a lot of dark advantage. timber hunting, and um, yeah, looking forward to it. It's a really good spot. So yeah, do you guys have any parting thoughts? Anything, Joey, anything else that came to your mind tonight? Uh, no, I think you covered it. I mean, we have a good plan in place for tomorrow, and hopefully it'll be a pretty exciting day. I'm sure we'll have a great time. Yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to say as well that this trip I've been really focusing on being relaxed and enjoying every moment rather than getting almost anxious about killing one or 
sometimes you can get the pressure of feeling pressure like you have to kill one or until you kill an elk and harvest an elk that you, then the pressure is off then you could almost enjoy it more but i've been really trying to focus on and that's a, that's a good um i think in me a competitive spirit where i i'm obviously here to try to harvest an elk but i've been really trying to focus on enjoying this every moment and i know that whether we we harvest an elk or not we're going to we're having an awesome time we're we're healthy we're able to be out here we're we're live we're breathing and you know and so never take that for granted as well so that's first and foremost and killing an elk is second yeah and uh, the thing i wanted to add to that is uh, i'm sure joe you'd agree with that you and gabe have been completely unselfish with help like you know when we had these encounters or you guys are pushing us ahead and you're like you know we want you guys to experience shooting one and that's that's super cool and and definitely don't expect that in in any way but that's that's cool that that's the way that it's went so i'd much um, rather see you guys smoke a bull oh my goodness i'd be just as pumped and that's the truth oh i i can't wait i just hope well i know it's gonna happen like we we're saying earlier 100 percent tomorrow it's happening i've been saying this uh for three years now <laughs> no <laughs> hey, it's but good attitude to I, have. I have i really have a good feeling about yeah. tomorrow and i think one of us is going to take a bull Just a matter and of we're going to have fresh back straps and i'm that's it you know that's i'm, I'm ready for it i'm ready we'll for do our it. best that's for sure yep and if not we'll still have a good time not, and we'll joke have a and laugh and and uh watch everyone uh play in the creek <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> coming down we were, we were having a good time just uh just messing around together so that, that's cool it's a, a again it's a real good group dynamic and tomorrow's september 12th september 12th and 13th i've always been uh, when i say always i've been elk hunting this is my third year but last two years it's been my hottest days as far as bugling and having encounters so hoping that stays the same things are going to turn on tomorrow and uh, we're going to have a day that we definitely won't forget. So we'll check back in and talk to you guys tomorrow. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of East Meets West Hunt with your host, Bo Martonic. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit eastmeetswesthunt.com, Facebook at East Meets West Outdoors, and Instagram at East Meets West Hunt. If you enjoyed today's episode, please review and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time.